Well, I guess how often would you recommend that people be using that device, taking tests on it? So that's a good question. It kind of depends on your goals. Um, we we did a study internally, like an informal study, where we took. So we we currently offer a mail-in test, which is a blood card that you put several drops of blood on. It separates the blood cells from the serum, and then it it you send it dried to to a central lab that we work with that processes it. And uh, you know, we just wanted to start collecting data on you know what is the what are the meaningful time frames to take the tests and at which markers change quickly. And we did a you know it's like a seventeen biomarker test, and we ran it weekly on about thirty people for like four months. And we actually found that many of the markers were changing significantly on a weekly basis. Uh, mm -hmm. So many markers that people are only measuring once a year are actually changing pretty quickly. Um, and it might be that they're actually changing even more frequently, but you know, we weren't measuring because it, it's just too, you know, taking, taking the, the mail and test more than, you know, once a week would be, uh, you know, not a lot. There was, there was like one person in the study who really wanted to do it every day, but most people were unwilling. Um, but uh, yeah, I think for it really depends on what you're doing. So if you're if you're just starting some experiments where you're trying to improve your health, having that feedback loop is really valuable. So you might want to be testing every week. You might want to be testing specifically after you do something, right, to see if it's having an effect on you. Uh, you might want to be testing to like experiment with. So for example, if you're having like fatigue, you might want to know whether it's related to your cortisol levels or something else. Uh, so you might want to test specifically, like get at some, you know, to to try to debug some symptom or some experience you're having. Um, general kind of like tracking once a month is a pretty good number if the test is very convenient. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's less convenient or it's expensive and and so on, like quarterly is what people are currently doing typically, right? If they're serious, and yearly is kind of the standard, uh, which which I think everybody agrees is to, is like very rare. For most, for most of the markers they are changing quickly, yearly doesn't make a lot of sense because you could just be measuring an accident because they change also, you know, you might've slept poorly that one day and you come in or whatever it is, you might've just gotten over a cold and you come in for your yearly blood test and your numbers are completely different than they would have been if you had come in two weeks later. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's kind of very noisy data. Like over 10 years, you collect 10 data points. Um, I mean, your camera collects 30 frames per second. Like it's completely... Uh, for something mm. really important, 10 data points in 10 years is very little, uh, especially knowing that it's something that changes, you know, on a weekly basis. Yeah. So what, what the um, the block test, what, what does that actually look at? So we tried to cover, you know, basically we really wanted to focus on people that are already trying to optimize or maintain their health, like, like are self-motivated. So we were looking at the longevity crowd or people that are, that are looking to improve their health span and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the four categories that we, we thought would be interesting would be uh, inflammation because it's so connected to longevity, uh, metabolic health, again, because it's so connected to longevity uh, and also underpins inflammation. And then um, like hormonal nutritional balance and cardiovascular risk. So those four categories, we basically tried to put as many markers for each category as we could into one complete panel. And it's it's not, you know, you can always make a more complete panel if you take more and more blood tests, but it's definitely something where we have a decent picture. Like if somebody's metabolically unhealthy, it's very obvious uh, mm -hmm. because we're collecting a couple of markers like fasting insulin, uh, HbA1c, triglyceride HDL ratio. Uh, so usually pretty much you're going to see a pattern in those. Um, so it's like two out of three will be bad or something like that, uh, at least. So and and the same for inflammation or or like hormonal health and cardiovascular health. Uh, we did, for example, we included ApoA and ApoB, mm. which are typically not available. Uh, like if you just get a standard blood test, you'll get LDL, HDL. But it's been known already for a long time, maybe 20 years, that ApoA and ApoB are better risk predictors. Uh, so we were able to get ApoA and ApoB in there, for example. TyFox is kind enough to offer a 20% discount to Modern Healthspan listeners. Please go to the link in the description or use the code MODERN on the SciFox Health website to sign up. Yeah, it's a little bit of a diversion. But yes, I saw that you did, and uh, I believe that they are much better predictors than LDLC and HDLC. So how come they're not more generally available. Why don't other people offer them in the standard panel 
if it's something that you can do on like a home test kit? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, um, so I think, first of all, it's not some it's it's definitely only become avail more and more available to do from a technical perspective, like the assays and, and reagents mm -hmm. and things have probably become more common in the last, let's say, five years. But I think there's just a lot of inertia. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you go to like um, another home test kit company, so if you look at like Everlywell, which is kind of the first company in the space, they... And, and nothing negative about this, but they basically, it's a business school company in the sense that the founder was in business school and they looked at Google searches, probably. Uh, I don't know the exact founding story, but you know, people are searching like, I don't feel well, I would like a test. So it's not coming from a place of science or like, you know, trying to like revolutionize medicine or something like that. It's, it's more just, there's a customer need, which is people want to get tested, right? And so then you just sell the most basic thing. So they'll sell like a two biomarker test for $150. And they're like, okay, this is your test for metabolic health or whatever. Uh, and so they're fulfilling the marketing need. It's like, okay, what is the minimum viable product for somebody who's worried about cardiovascular risk? Like, we'll just sell this kit. Um, there's a new generation of companies, which I think we're part of, but there are many others that are actually more seriously looking at, okay, not will satisfy the consumer in a short term like they're searching for a test on google like we're going to be the top result and sell this kit but they're actually thinking like how do i benefit this person enough that they're going to keep coming back and actually they'll see improvements in their health and everything else um so i think those companies are looking much more at specifically like which markers work best right not just right. what are the most accepted most commonly searched markers like for example apob is searched much less than ldl right, right. so if you want to sell kits you know, LDL is more important, uh, but it, but if you want to actually benefit the end user, you might want to test both. So that's kind of how we see it is the what are, it's already completely the need for just like simple tests is it's already fulfilled more or less, at mm -hmm. least for mail and tests by companies like Everly Well, let's get checked, et cetera. And it depends on the country you're in and so on. But at least in America, you know, it's you're inundated with offers to buy at home tests. But that those are very simple kind of like digital marketing tests. So the question is, okay, if you really want to benefit the end user as much as possible and make the most out of them, them putting in the effort to take a test and spend the money, then what you know, expertise can go into this one test and like effort to make it useful. Uh, so that's more how we, we looked at it as a, it's a natural evolution from kind of like the thing that came before. Right. So once the device is ready, do you, see that it would be used in combination with a mail-in test or it would be switch over yeah i think we'll we'll always offer both and the reason mm -hmm. is that uh it really makes sense for the device to to be used for frequent testing uh so for example if you find that you have high crp you might want to test your crp every week and really figure out like what is it in your lifestyle or diet or whatever it might be that's causing high crp and you just optimize around that mm -hmm. um but some markers you really might not want to test that frequently uh, and it also doesn't make that much sense for us to develop them if there's not a big demand for like weekly testing for example we might not develop those markers in a cartridge mm -hmm. because we're better off just covering that with mail-in testing so there's always going to be some interplay one thing we are doing though is trying to cut the blood volume of the mail-in test uh so right now it's like eight eight drops of blood which is not bad uh mm -hmm. but it it's still i think you know, getting it down to like two drops of blood will make it much more comfortable. Uh, so that's something we're working on. We're hoping by the end of the year uh, to have that. And that's using our technology basically because we can do more than one test in a single experiments, uh, just using our own hardware, more mm -hmm. in a central lab setting where the, where the tests, where the cards are being mailed, the blood cards, we think we can get the blood volume down, which will make the mail and test a better experience also. Um, but it'll always be some combination of the two. Uh, with with the device being used to like focus on something and and optimize it. Cool. So you're collecting this data and you're it, collecting quite a wide variety of data. And also, yeah, I saw that you were as you talked about, you were linking to devices like Aura Rings and uh, Whoops and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do you are you planning to kind of run any analysis on the data and what would you kind of think to look for? So we already use the, so first of all, we present it to the user in a way where they can really easily correlate it for themselves. So meaning like if you look at your whoop data in one app and you look at your blood test next to that, 
it's very hard to correlate because the whoop data is happening on a constant basis mm -hmm. and the blood test is a single point. So what we do is we actually collect the last week, two weeks or month of your whoop data. And you can select actually in a dropdown, whether you want to do a week, two weeks or a month. And we put together averages and scores for that week. So for example, it's not your sleep every day, but it's just how well did you sleep on average that week or that month? And then you can see how that correlates to your blood data. The other thing that we, so it's, we make it much easier to come test with wearables because right now it's like a very, the timescales are just so different that it's hard to, uh, it's it's relatively difficult to make that comparison. The other thing that we do is we we provide insights uh, that are, they're like semi-automated. So we generate them automatically. And then there's an MD that actually uh, checks them before they go out to the user. And so those insights, a lot of them combine the wearable and blood data. So basically, um, I mean, an interesting example is like if you have high inflammation, we see that correlating with poor sleep in a lot of users. Mm -hmm. uh, so we take that and turn that into an insight for an individual user, where if we see they have poor sleep and high CRP or high inflammation, we'll tell them, uh, yeah, you should consider here's something you can consider to improve your sleep because we think your inflammation may drop if you uh, like in 50 percent of users, the inflammation is correlated to sleep. Uh, and as we collect, you know, now we've been the service the blood spot service has been running really only for like four months. So mm -hmm. as we keep going, we're more and more really interesting insights and baking that into the service. So it's kind of a virtuous cycle. Yes. So kind of inside tracker, like competing with inside tracker, I guess, mm -hmm. to some degree. Yeah, no, I think inside tracker definitely is the right direction, right? So directionally, mm -hmm. you know, collecting more data, pro pro providing it in a, you know, more useful way. Um, but it's very, they've just been around a long time. So they kind of took whatever was the best thing 10 years ago and put those things together. Uh, so they support like two wearables or something or three wearables. We support mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also, you know, are based mostly on Venus draws. So you can't really do those very frequently. It's like very expensive and, and inconvenient. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can think of the service that we sell now is is a little bit like, an inside tracker 2.0 you can think of it that way but obviously the next step where you actually have the device in your home mm -hmm. is like you know a step change but i think even mm -hmm. what we've done so far because the frequency of like of testing is greater uh where i think that the quality of the experience is like is, is is completely different because you can it's hard to remember what you even did like if you're taking a test every six months it's hard to remember, okay, what did I do these past six months uh, versus, you know, monthly, it's it's more manageable. Uh, and you can yes. see, you start seeing like baselines and so on. So, but there there is definitely a similarity to to what Insight Tracker tried to, or has been trying to accomplish for a long time. Right. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, I get my test, like, because it, it's quite expensive here. Like I get it done, my blood test done um, once a year, probably something like that. And apart from HbA1c, which has got some kind of time to it, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just making sure that everything, that nothing looks too wrong, really. Yeah, yeah exactly. And nothing. Um, yeah, I think uh, also from our perspective, like when we when we launched the mail-in blood test service, because we're a hardware company, we're anticipating to cut the cost of all of this significantly, right? So what mm -hmm. we started with is we priced that service, like the mail-in service, as low as we possibly could. So we actually slightly lose money on it. Like we're hoping to, with volume, break even on that. Uh, but it's it's something where, for us, it's a loss leader because that's not our main business. Our main business is the hardware. For us, it's a loss leader. We just want to get people testing. You know, we want to collect data find out which markers are the exciting ones, build those out on a, in our hardware system, right? It's not really, the end goal is not to make money on a mail-in test. Uh, so that that's also allowed us to kind of grow quickly because we just were able to set really low prices, you know, where rather than trying to have a margin and, and kind of build a business around the mail-in test. Uh, we just want to scale it as much as possible, even if it doesn't make that much money. Right. So so at the moment is that the, the mail-in test is is available for anyone that they just got to pay the money, sign up. Yeah, yeah. So it's available oh. on a like a monthly, quarterly, or yearly cadence, and mm -hmm. it comes with the wearable device integration and all the insights and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been growing really well. So it's, since we launched it, it's uh, been like dub basically doubling every month. 
Um, oh. So it, it's been growing very well. And, and again, I think it's mainly because it's it's has pretty good features and we are just not, we're pricing it very aggressively because we want people to use it so that we can learn about like what's more, most valuable uh, to the end customer and and be, and in, integrate it in our hardware development. Right. Yes, it looks, yeah, it looks really interesting. Where should use, where should li- the audience listeners go? Should they go to Cyfox Bio or Cyfox Health or both? Uh, it depends what they're interested in, but if, if you're interested in the service we offer now, uh, it's cyfoxhealth.com. And if you're interested in getting onto like a waiting list for the at-home hardware, uh, you can just leave your email at the bottom of cyfoxhealth.com. There's a little uh, like email sign up, and we'll be blasting out kind of a more detailed sign up where you can tell us a little bit about a little bit about yourself, and we'll see if it makes sense. Like if you're a fit for the study, mm-hmm. uh, which would allow us to uh, actually send you the device uh, for you to use it in the home. Right, and the study is U.S. and Canada only, and. No, the study could be the, the product oh. today is US and Canada oh, only, right. but actually the study you can is worldwide potentially. So if it, anybody oh. anybody is potentially eligible, so people should definitely uh leave us their email and we'll get in touch with them and, and see if it see if we can make it happen if they're excited about trying this. Oh, yes, definitely. Um okay, and that, that's like Q3 ish. Uh you think uh it'll start in Q3, so it'll be yeah. Some number of people will get it this year, and then we'll really ramp it up in Q- in uh, 2024. Okay, Mike, excellent. So thank you so much for joining us today. And um, yeah, we, we already talked about the website. So yeah, please uh, sign up if uh, you want to see what this device looks like.